Previously, we learned about handling loading states with use form status. Now let's dive into something equally important, managing error states in our forms. We will be using another new React hook called useActionState. useActionState is a React hook that allows us to update state based on the result of a form action. It is particularly helpful for handling form validation and error messages. Let's jump into code and see how it works. In products db create page.tsx file, let's start by defining our types for error handling. Type errors. We will track three potential errors, one for the title, one for the price, and one for the description field. They're optional of type string. The errors will be part of the overall form state. So let's define that. Type form state contains a key errors of type errors. Now inside our component, we will set up the initial form state. So const initial state of type form state is equal to an object with errors set to an empty object. We now have the prerequisites in place for our use action state hook. Invoke it within the component, use action state. Make sure to import it from React. So import, use action state from React. This hook takes two parameters. First, our server action, which is create product. And second, our initial form state, which is what we have just defined. You might see a TypeScript error for create product, but don't worry, we will fix that shortly. Next, let's update our create product server action to work with this new state. First, let's declare errors of type errors, which is an empty object to begin with. Next, if there is no title in the form data, we set errors.title is equal to title is required. Similarly, if price doesn't exist in our form data, we set errors.price, price is required. And finally, if description doesn't exist in our form data, we set errors.description is equal to description is required. It is optional in our model, but let's enforce a required field validation. Once we perform these checks, if object.keys of errors.length is greater than zero, we return the errors object. What we are doing here is validating the form data and setting appropriate error messages. If you find any errors, we return an updated form state without proceeding to the insert statement. Since the object key and value is errors, we can use the shorthand notation. This, however, should conform to our form state type. In case you're finding it difficult to keep track, within our create product server action, we're getting hold of title, price, and description from form data and then we check if values exist for each of them. If they don't, we populate an errors object with the different keys. If even one key exists, we have an error in our form and we return the errors object instead of inserting the data into our database. Let's now go back to our use action state hook. This hook returns an array with three things. The const array is equal to use action state. The hook returns the current form state which we will call state, a new form action, which we will call form action, and a boolean that indicates if the action currently is being executed. Let's call it is pending. Now let's use the three values in our component. First, we will use the current form state to display the error messages. So below each label, we will add a paragraph that displays the error message if it exists. So curly braces, state dot errors dot title and if this exists add a paragraph tag rendering state dot errors dot title we'll also add tailwind styling to display the message in red i'm going to copy these three lines of code and paste it under price as well as description labels for price update state dot errors dot price and for description state.errors.description. We will also group the form field and the error message in a div tag. So div tag, wrapping, label, as well as error message. Div tag, wrapping, label, and error message. 
and the final one. This is purely for grouping related elements and adding space between the different fields. State is now taken care of. Next, we will bind the form action to our forms action attribute. So instead of create product, we specify form action. We will use the ease pending boolean to conditionally disable the submit button when the action is being executed. Now this is completely optional as we are already handling the pending state with use form status in the submit component. But I will show you how to do it anyway. I will comment out the submit button component, copy the button element from the submit component, and paste it in place. To the disabled attribute, we will pass is pending boolean returned by the use action state hook. Ultimately, what we have done here is instead of directly calling the server action create product, we pass it through the use action state hook that manages state updates based on the form action. Now, when we save the file and head back to the browser, we will run into an error. Can you guess why? Well, we're using a React hook in a server component, use action state. Now, your first instinct might be to add use client at the top of our file. Let's do that, use client. When I save the file, you can see that gives us a different error because it is not allowed to define inline use server annotated server actions in client components. In simpler terms, we can't use the use server directive in a component marked with the use client directive. So what is the solution? That is what we will explore next. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe, it helps a lot.